All right, last section. All right, the bow chicka wow wow. I try, thank you. I tried to keep this uh, pretty PG thirteen. We have a couple bonus sections. If you want, to, if you opt in to that, you can you can w watch it if you'd like. Um, de demos. I, you know, I almost called this section mating mechanics, but I was like, everyone knows the mechanics. I'm going to call it something else. So yes, no demos. Don't worry. So researchers discovered that men tended to overestimate a woman's sexual interest <laughs> while women underestimated a man's willingness to commit. How many people did this shock? Absolutely no one. But I wanted to show you that it is actually backed up in the research. They have actually found that these are where the two area, the, two, the couples both disagree. And so this section, I'm going to try to show you how we can auto-correct for those overestimates and underestimates. All right. So the way that we do that is by focusing on those first two things I talked about at the very beginning of the course, which is attraction and trust. If we go back to those two, we have less underestimates and overestimates, and hopefully we get it just right. So remember these five that we talked about, how to know when someone is into you. So this is just a brief review, right? Intimate gazing, they use close proxemics, they keep their lips available. So we didn't really talk about this one, but that a woman who wants to be kissed will always keep her lips available. It usually works with men as well, but women especially, are they lean in more, they keep their head out, um, they're actually shown that they, they want to have their lips available. They use the toe direction and increased haptics, so they touch more as well as self-touching and preening. There's a last one that I didn't talk about that goes right here, and this is called the Marilyn, it's nicknamed so. And this is when a woman, specifically, tilts her head back, exposes her neck, lowers her lids, and opens her mouth. I'm not going to do it because the reason why women do this is because it mirrors the orgasm face. That is exactly why a woman do this, does this. And they have found that when a woman is the height of her attraction, ready to be taken home, ready to be kissed, she will almost always engage in this exact look. The reason for that is because it releases pheromones. It shows the roundness of a woman's face, which is high in estrogen. It tilts her head back and closes her lids, which is the bedroom look, and reminds the man of the orgasm face. And we do this completely subconsciously. But if you want to know what it's like, we talked about overestimation. If you see this face, you know you have a green light. And women, don't accidentally do this face. I don't see why that you would, but this is usually the green light. All right, nonverbal signs of back up. Right, so this is when you've gone too far, you never want to mistake some of these signs for, I am not feeling it. Here's what we do non-verbally when we don't like what's happening in front of us. The first one is lip pursing. So lip pursing is very distinct. It's when someone mashes their lips together, it looks like this. Mm. We do this when we're trying to hold back a negative inner feeling. For example, if you ask a woman, how much do you weigh? She'll most often go, mmm, because she really doesn't want to answer you. So watch out for lip pursing, especially if you're talking to a woman and she does this. Whatever you've just asked her makes her very uncomfortable. She's holding back what she actually wants to say. The suprasternal notch is the notch that's right in between your two collarbones on both men and women. When we touch this notch, both men and women, we do this when we're nervous. And the reason is because it's a self-soothing gesture. When we touch this, it lowers our heart rate, it calms us down. You'll notice that when you've uh, stepped into sensitive territory, people will uh, start to rub their jewelry, their tie, this part of their neck. It's a way of self-soothing and calming down. So if you see someone doing this, this is not necessarily the best time to go in for the kiss. The power of the purse. So women love to use their purse as a blocking behavior. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this, you probably noticed it, that women will do this when they're feeling very uncomfortable. Blocking is what we do when we want to protect our vitals from something. So I will watch women's purses as a gauge of their inner emotions. Because you'll notice that if a woman is talking to a man and it's going really well, she'll swing her purse back or drop it on the floor. She wants it out of the way of her connection. If it's not going well, you will see that purse cross over the front of her body and maybe even her second arm will come over to hug it as a blocking behavior. So the purse is a great indicator of what the inner feelings are if you're making someone uncomfortable. All right, let's talk about the other side. So nonverbal signs of trust. 
showing your hands. We talked about how your hands are your trust indicators. They did mock jury trials and they scripted these jury, the, the trials. They wanted to see what nonverbal signs could change the outcome of the, of the jury. So what they did was they had in one of the trials, the defendant put his hands under the table. And in those trials, the juries rated the defendant as more sneaky, as more mistrustful just because the jury wasn't able to see their hand. Remember, it was all scripted. The words were exactly the same. But when someone hides their hands, we have a really hard time trusting them. So always keeping your hands visible is a great way to just set the stage for building trust. Men, one of the best ways you can build trust with women, and this is repeated over and over again in the studies, and hopefully our women will corroborate it here today, is that any kind of offer of protection is the ultimate alpha behavior. It makes you seem, look, and feel more attractive because every woman wants to feel protected and validated. So a couple ways you can do this very easily, exactly what your mama taught you, right? Offering your coat, opening doors, and pulling out chairs. Protection is one of the most attractive things that a woman finds because it's all about building that trust. They feel like they can be taken care of. Lastly, showing them how you want them to feel. So if you're on a date and you see that someone's in very low confident body language, they have their shoulders rolled in, their arms are crossed, because we naturally mirror people, you can actually demonstrate the body language that you want them to have because they will subconsciously, as they relax, mirror you. So you can do this by lowering your shoulders and calming down your breathing. If I'm on an interview with someone, like if I am interviewing for an internship and I notice they're like they're very nervous, I will consciously slow down my breathing to get them to slow down their breathing. So I will <sighs> do that. And you'll notice they will often take a deep relief breath without even realizing it. So you can also show the exact body language that you hope they will feel to build trust. All right, nonverbal signs of untrustworthiness. So a couple different studies here, MIT, Cornell, Northeastern, all found four behaviors that trigger concerns about trustworthiness. Very specifically, they replicated this over and over again. Here's what you want to avoid. Leaning away. The second someone leans away in a negotiation, a business situation on a date, that triggers untrustworthiness. So when you are on a date and you feel yourself leaning back in a way, you want to be very careful because that's showing that you are not to be trusted. Unconsciously, this triggers their warning signs. Second, crossing arms. I barely even talk about crossing arms, so I think that we all know that we need to keep our arms um, uncrossed. And the reason for this has everything to do with trust. When we cannot see someone's torso, we know that we cannot have a connection with them. So that blocking behavior, opening up your body, is the best way to have that heart-to-heart -heart connection. And uh, fronting is a great way to do this as well. Toes, torso, and top, and leaving your torso open. Touching, rubbing, grasping hands together. So this gesture that people do, people do it very subconsciously, the hand wringing is the nonverbal cue for nerves and unfortunately it signals all kinds of red flags to the other person of untrustworthiness. The problem is a lot of us do this habitually. We don't even mean to do it, it's just what we do when we're standing because we've gotten used to it. So that's why getting in that launch stance is really important. It prevents you against doing that subconsciously without even realizing it. I also almost always hold a drink or a clicker. One of the reasons why I hold a clicker and I don't have someone else click for me is because it makes sure that I don't do that with my hands. It forces my hands apart. At networking events, at parties, I also always hold a drink to keep my hands separate. Sometimes if I can't even have a drink, I'll hold my business cards in my hand as a way to not do that, to keep them uncrossed and in my launch stance. And lastly, and I thought this was interesting, touching the face and stomach. So I don't mean lips, I don't mean neck, I don't mean hair. I mean face touching. So nose touching, and in lie detection we talk a lot about nose touching as a huge sign of lying. Touching the face is a very low confidence gesture. When you touch your face, people see it as low confidence. The way that they figured this out is they actually watched videos of alphas and non-alphas, so bosses and their subordinates, and they found that the bosses had very low levels of face touching and stomach touching, whereas the subordinates has high levels of face touching and stomach touching. So somehow alphas in our society know this and touch their face and their stomach less. 
So these are the four behaviors if you're going to start somewhere. And in the, our course, we have a whole cheat sheet section of how to apply these right away. This is usually where I recommend starting when you can start somewhere. All right, I promised the, tr the touch map, the trust and touch map. So it's very important. I talked about haptics, how you can touch someone to build connection to get that oxytocin really pumping. This has to be followed carefully because you want to make sure you don't touch someone in a place they don't want to be touched. So here is the touch map. The further up the arm you go, the more intimate the touch. Hand is the least um, intimate, right, a handshake. Forearm, shoulder, um, upper arm, shoulder. Further up the leg you go, the more intimate. So thigh, uh, outer thigh touch is actually not as intimate as a low back touch. That's a much more intimate touch. This zone is very intimate always. And the face is also very intimate. So touching someone's face in any way is a very intimate touch. And they found these by um, watching videos of people being touched and had them rate how they felt at those touches. And the further up that we went, the more uncomfortable they got, unless they were actually intimate with someone. So if you want to play it safe, I recommend you start with the hand or the forearm and see what happens. Do you get a responsive touch? Do they lean into the touch? Do they touch you back? Do they smile? Do they lean into it? Or do they lean back? Do they pull their hand away? Do they make a disgust face? Do they look angry? <laughs> right? This is a very easy way to say, and you can actually work your way up the arm as you go. Yeah. All right, let's talk about a couple of nonverbal deal breakers. Deal breakers usually happen when uh, people are trying to decide if they want to take it to the physical level or not. So looking down your nose, non-verbally, okay, I'm not talking about verbal deal breakers, that's a different course. Non-verbal deal breakers, looking down your nose. Women, you have to be super careful on this one. Looking down your nose at someone <laughs> is the universal non-verbal gesture of judgment. Critical, negative. So women, if you are judging someone, you will typically be like, mm, right? Men see this as incredibly critical and negative. So it's very important if you feel yourself tilting your head back, bring it right back forward and look at them head on. So be very careful with that tilting the head back and looking down your nose at someone. Pointing. Pointing is an extremely aggressive non behavior. Even when I do it right now, we're probably like, ugh, I don't like when she does that. For some reason, we do not like it. Politicians who po used to point when they spoke are trained out of it and now they do this. There's a reason for that, or the open hand gesture. There's a reason for that. Pointing, it's very socially aggressive. It kind of like just gets our, our, it creeps us out for some reason. So be very careful um, that you don't point at your date across the table. We don't even realize we do it sometimes, but it can rub people the wrong way. And this is just basic charisma, right? This isn't just dating. This is any kind of social interactions. Over touching. So again, really responsive touch, making sure that you're paying attention to their nonverbal. How do they respond when you reach out and touch their hand, their low back, or their shoulder to make sure that they actually like it? And by the way, this is both sexes over touching. People report over touching, men report over touching, and women report over touching as well. So it's both sexes. And the last one is ignoring space issues. Um, everyone has their own personal bubble, right? So my intimate space, the most, it said zero, I don't know if you saw that, but it was zero to 18 inches was intimate, and there was brackets. So where we have some wiggle room in there. So it's important if you're talking to someone that you notice if you approach them and they're leaning back like this, you've come too close into their zone. I accidentally sometimes have actually pushed people up against walls. They're like slowly backing up and they go all the way up against a wall because I've gotten too close in their zone. I get so into it and excited that I push them all the way back. So you want to be very aware of someone's spacious just to see have they planted and they're okay or have they taken a step back and they're rocking back. Um, that's a very easy way that you can show non-verbally, I respect your space, I trust your space. Um, all right, a little research on some of the physical side. So a woman's favorite spot to be kissed which I found surprising, other than the mouth is the neck. 96% of women reported that they like neck, neck kisses. Only 10% of men do. That's a huge difference, right? Like, neck kissing is really on the way to something better. So if you're doing the opposite of what the other gender wants, you might not be getting as far as you want, and they might not be getting what they want. So just something interesting to keep in the back of your head on the differences on that. 
All right. I thought we would look at the seven types of pre-sex touch. Not that you don't know these, but I wanted to show you a survey of which are men's favorite and which are women's favorite because they are different. So seven types of pre-sex touch, back rubs, massages, caressing, stroking, cuddling, holding, hugging, holding hands, kissing on the lips, kissing on the face. So can you guess which are the men's favorites? Not hand-holding. <laughs> not hand-holding. <laughs> not hand-holding. That is right, Blake, not hand-holding. Going hugging is probably not Not hugging or cuddling. Uh, yeah. <laughs> caressing and stroking. Caressing and stroking. <laughs> and women, what do you think women like? Hand-holding, hugging. Hand-holding, <laughs> hugging. All right, shall we see? So, back rubs and massages are actually first and kissing on the lips are men's favorite by quite a lot actually these are men's favorites uh statistically speaking of course you're saying doing or to be done both oh. any kind of pre-sex test these are the favorites women cuddling and holding and holding hands right <laughs> so <laughs> men typically offer do you want a back rub yes. Right? They always ask that. Always ask that. Right. And the reason is because if I, if I had it. <laughs> and that is because it is a man's favorite pre sex touch. So I thought these studies were interesting just to know what the differences are between the sexes, what the expectations are when you want to lead it up. So the most important part of this, of all the, the nonverbal and pre touch and uh, pre sex touches, is threefold. One, showing that you are attracted. I hope that if you learn one thing in this course is that you might think you're showing your interest, but often it takes way more than you think, that signal amplification bias. We, we often are like, we just, we just credit the first five to 10 signals that we see subconsciously, or we just don't notice them. So you are not as obvious as you think. If you feel attraction, you gotta show it. Second, showing you are willing to adapt to them. So the biggest part of nonverbal and dating is showing a respect that nonverbally you are willing to mirror them, notice their facial expressions, change your facial expressions to show that you want to celebrate with them or show empathy with them. That is the best nonverbal non respect you can show because it truly validates them and their feelings. And the last one is showing that you want to know them. Again, on our hierarchy of needs, we just want people to want to know and care about us. And you can do this non-verbally with head tilting, with engagement, with showing micro-expressions, with nodding. That shows that you want to know them on every level.